Praise the living God. Another day in paradise. Uh, today, God is cleaning the floor. Which is always a good thing, right? Because the floor was dirty last week, right? Remember that? And God decided to clean it up right now. He does that from time to time, believe it or not. He's cleaning the air. He's cleaning the floor. Well, let's just bow our heads. Let's bless this gathering. Let's bless this food. God has provided chicken. I'm not calling you chicken, though. He has provided chicken for all of us, and there is plenty. You're welcome to come back for seconds and thirds. Be blessed. And remember, remember one thing. You can forget everything I'm saying, but do not forget this. God loves you. He loves you. That's why we're here. Street Church is here for one purpose, to manifest God's love for all to see. Because I can talk forever until the cows will come home about love, but if I will not manifest that love, if I will not show you that I really love you when you're hungry, when you're without hope, when you're depressed, suicidal, and all kinds of things are happening in your life, I would be just a hypocrite. And let me just tell you something. There are many hypocrites around the world right now. They have shut down the churches. They have abandoned God's people. They run away. They betrayed. They have no faith. And the Bible says without faith, you cannot please God. When He comes back and Jesus Christ is coming back, just like what it says on my van, Jesus is coming back to judge the living and the dead. He is coming back. He says, when I come back, will I find faith? He's not talking about big ministries. He's not talking about mega churches. He's not talking about even orphanages and food, you know, soup kitchens. He's talking about faith. When you have faith, everything else triggers from faith. You know why those people shut down the churches and why the pastors are not preaching the truth? Why they have given? You know why? Because they don't have faith. Because in their mind, the mayor is bigger than their God. In their mind, the premier is bigger than their God. In their mind, the enemy, the Goliaths, the giants of the land are bigger than the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In their minds, the enemy, the uncircumcised Philistines are more powerful than the army of the living God. But not, not in my case. I've seen the power of God. When He raised my boy from the dead, I've seen the power of His love. When He changed my life from a drunkard that was hooked on a booze every single day, a slave to a bottle, when He changed me from a slavery to freedom, I've tasted His power. When He changed a good-for-nothing, arrogant, proudful buffoon that I was into a man that feeds the poor, I've met His power. Many people have never met the real God. They've heard about God. Someone told them about God. Maybe they grew up in a house when people were talking about God, but they've never, ever had an encounter with the living God. There's many religious people out there, many people that go to churches, I mean right now they can't, but through the years I remember seeing them going to the church, the way they came, and they came out of that building the same way they came in. Many people think that going to a church is going to make you a Christian. But let me tell you something, if you go to a McDonald's, even if you do it for 20 years, it will not turn you into a Big Mac. Just going to a place is not going to change you. You can go to a garage, but that will never change you into a car. You can have wishful thinking. You can pray all your life, but it will not turn you into a Big Mac. It just, it's just a reality of things. Going to a church, being religious, and repeating certain formulas will not change you. It will not turn you into a believer, believer in Christ. 
I'll tell you what will change you, though, is a real encounter with the living God. The encounter with the Holy Spirit. Encounter with the blood of Jesus. An encounter with the God of the universe, the Alpha and Omega. You know, people say to me, you're not afraid of the variants, the deltas. And, and I always look at them, are you kidding me? I serve Alpha and Omega. I do not care about the delta. Why would I? I am not concerned with the deltas. While I am focused on Alpha and Omega, my life is covered. He knows my days. He counted them all. Believe it or not, he knows how many hair I have on my head, and I know I'm losing some. I don't know why. There are many things I do not understand. There are many things I'm asking God, but he doesn't reveal those mysteries to me. Why you have so much and I have so little? I do not know. What I do know, though, is that my God is a perfect God, and my God has a plan for my life. No matter what the enemy is planning, no matter what the enemy is cooking, my God is the one that will be delivering. He is the God. Besides him, there is no one else. No one else is beside my God. The one that raised me from the dead. The one that cleaned me up and set me free. So those people across the street, the city hall, devils, they think they can control our lives. They think that they are the pharaohs and we are the slaves. They think that. Because for too long they have not been challenged. I say it's time to challenge them. It's time to bring the accountability back to City Hall, back to the legislatures, back to the parliament. And even if they will escape the accountability of a man, they will not escape the accountability of God. Yes, they may escape the judgment of man. They may. But they will not escape the judgment of the judge of judges. As you know, Wednesday I'm facing another trial. This time, criminal charges for officiating a church service. Another trial for not wearing a muzzle. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not a dog. And no offense to those that wear a muzzle, that's up to you. In the end, we're living in a free country. But I don't want to wear one. I don't have a need of one. And maybe if I knew that this whole thing was real and the people were dying left and right, maybe I would be the one advocating to wear one. But I know the truth. You see, the Bible says the truth. When you know the truth, the truth shall set the captives free. So I know the truth. I know that the piece of cloth cannot protect you and not, cannot prevent from the spread because the virus is 1,000 times smaller than a bacteria. Knowing things sets you free. We can have a lot of knowledge, but knowledge itself without the Spirit of God puffs you up. So you have lots of educated people, dumb as dumb you can be. I think cows are smarter than most of those professors these days because you see a cow knows that two cows will not ever, I don't know, maybe this is a surprise to you, but two calves will never make, two, two cows will never, never make a calf. You need a bull for that. Oh, shocking. Is that a shock to you? You need a cow and a bull. Then you can have children. That's how it works. But what do they teach you, kids? That two cows can make a calf? Doesn't work though. I know, that's crazy. Even dogs know better, I know. Tell those professors, you got many degrees, but you're so stupid. You're so dumb that my kitty cat knows better than those professors in school. I say we should fire them all. Agreed? See, the kids agree with me. They know, they're smart kids. They're smart kids. Those professors are out of their minds. 
You know, the best time I have is with the farmers, because the farmer knows. The farmer knows how things are being done. The worst time I have with those so-called professors, because they're so brainwashed, you can't even have a normal conversation with them. It is what it is. They have been brainwashing the society for so long. The trolley were living in a times so where good is called evil and evil is, go is called good. So anyway, be blessed today, kids. Be smart, be sharp, be smarter than your teachers. And you shall be fine. You will survive this craziness. The same way, when they're telling you to wear a muzzle, tell them, if the muzzles work, how come the, the diapers do not work on children? Because every time my kid did the unthinkable, when we were attacked by a bi biological warfare, when my kids were smaller, and I was left alone without my wife, I'm telling you, it was a scary time. So my wife would go shopping, and I was left with my little baby, and the baby attacked me with a biological weapon. And I just, I was, I was horrified. I mean, I, I, I admit, it was a horrible thing. And not only it was a horrible thing, but when I said, you know, you did this, I mean, I can smell it, everyone can smell it. And I said, Daddy has to change you because first I would grab the telephone and I'll call my wife. <laughs> Honey, where are you? Are you near the house? And I was praying very hard. <laughs> but sometimes she said, no, I'm an hour away or two hours away. That was a tragedy. It was like worse than Pearl Harbor to me. It was a, a real tragedy. So finally, I decided I have to fix the problem or we are both going to be dead. So I would say to my kids, okay, daddy has to change your pampers. And the kid, instead of running towards me, is running away. So now, not only am I being attacked by a biological warfare, now I have to chase the bomb itself. That's against my nature. But finally, I would cut you know, catch that SKP. And after about 10 minutes of horror, hell on earth, I would fix that kit and we survived. And I'm still scarred for life by those experiences. But I survived whatever, you know, whatever you're facing, if you're facing some horrible things, it gets you stronger, some stronger. But anyway, the point was this, that if the pampers cannot protect you from that biological weapon, you really think uh, a piece of cloth is going to protect you? Of course not. We know that. Everyone knows that. So why wear one? Well, because they want you to wear one. They want to be fires. I just simply say no. No. If it doesn't work, I will not wear one. So be blessed, church. Again, you can forget everything I was saying to you today, but do not first forget the one, one statement I'll make in the end. And I started that today, and I want to end the same way. You can forget every word I have said. Do not forget those. God loves you. He loves you. How do I know that? Because for the past 22 years, he sends me to the streets of my city saying, go and feed the poor. I love them. Go and tell them that tomorrow is going to be okay. Tell them I love them. Show them that I do. Show them the cross and remind them that I love them so much that I, has, I have given them my only begotten son. And he was crucified on a tree. He was nailed to a cross. He was whipped, punched, spat at, tortured. Tell them I died for them. Tell them that I love them. So here I am today again on the streets of Calgary with a simple message. God loves you. He doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to die. And he's sending crazy people with a funny accent, 
to tell you that. We're loading the trucks number of times a week, over and over, to come here in front of this corrupted city hall with a corrupted, wicked, evil people to tell you that God has no corruption in him, to tell you that God sees everything, and that God is a just God, and he is a righteous judge, and he's going to deal with the crooks. Sooner or later, every man will face the living God. The cops, the health inspectors, the politicians, the media personalities, the camera, cameramen, the homeless, the rich, the famous, the Hollywood stars, men and women, children, and the younger. You know what I mean. We are all going to stand before God one day. I hope and I pray that you are on the right side of the fence. I hope that you have chosen the right side of history. And it's fascinating, in the English language it says history, his story. We are living in the middle of his story, where well, you can be part of his story. Be on the right side of eternity. Be with God that loves you and manifested that love on that tree. So, Mr. Larry, are you ready to rock and roll? And afterwards, we're going to have a baptist, right? We're going to the waters today. If you want to be baptized today in the middle of a hailstorm, I think that's one of a kind of an opportunity for you and for me. And I'll gladly do it. I keep you even longer than average Joe. I keep you five minutes under the water, see what happens. And then I will lay hands on you and pray for the resurrection. The Bible says, greater things than I you shall be doing also. So you can be part of the experiment. Do not be part of the experiment of the globalists, but you can be part of the experiment of the church. <laughs> I probably, uh, probably will be called of uh, threatening lives of humans or something like that. I'm sure they'll cook something. Okay, be blessed, Mr. Larry. Thank you, Arthur. Mr. Larry. Hello, Mr. Ile ludzi się spodziewasz w środę? Ile tak? To tam tym razem nie było za dużo, nie? Nie, to tam tym razem. Nice. It's for me? Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, look at it.